Hey, good day, everybody. Dave Walker here again with the Vita SMB Institute. As part of our Align 2021 agenda, I pr promised you that we would bring together leaders from, from our best SMB brands um, alongside of those who are really driving advocacy on behalf of small business, either in the form of organization or campaign um, uh, at really every level, at a federal level, state level, local level, and really trying to bring together more of a strategic dialogue. So I'm really excited to welcome uh, on the brand side, Rochelle from Spotify. Rochelle, welcome. Thank you so much. It's great to have you. And then from the advocacy side, Carissa, Carissa, welcome. Thank you, happy to be here. Well, why don't we just start out with just simple introductions. Um, Rochelle, I think a lot of people are gonna be interested as to, wait a minute, Spotify is actually a brand selling to small business. So please give the 411 on Spotify's small business and then please give the 411 on you as well. <laughs> Great, absolutely. Um, so my name is Rochelle Santorico and I'm the global director of SMB marketing for Spotify advertising. Um, I've been with Spotify for about nine months now and my team is focused on building our um, audience of, of small and medium sized businesses that connect with Spotify listeners on our platform, um, either through music, uh, advertising during the music that people are streaming um, or through podcasts. And uh, we do that through a self-serve platform that we call Ad Studio. Um, so we are just deeply committed to bringing more uh, small and medium-sized businesses around the globe and connecting them with our really immersed listeners. Um, as far as my background, um, as I mentioned, I've been with Spotify for about nine months. Prior to that, I was actually the CEO of a small um, technology company um, and have been in the SMB space for about 10 years, um, although I've worked across many different industries during my career. So very excited to be here at Spotify. It's a very exciting place to be, and we're doing amazing things uh, with small businesses now. That's very cool. And and we would love to have you back at some point just to talk about that, because again, I'm not sure that anyone in our audience would presume to know, okay, what, what exactly is Spotify selling to small business? So fascinating to hear. I mean, you're effectively becoming their new local radio station. Is that a fair, fair way of putting it? But so much better, David. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, you know, we really think about uh, the fact that we're combining the best of what people love about radio and advertisers, the mm -hmm. reason why they like to be within that immersed audience on radio, um, but also digital, the element of digital. So mm -hmm. we are digital streaming audio. So we have the targeting capabilities and the broad reach and the measurement capabilities that um, advertisers are used to from digital media. Terrific. Carissa, I, you know, I'd like, I, I, I'm not sure you need any introduction, but <laughs> we do actually have a lot of new members in the last six months. And I would love for you to introduce you and Silver Lining. Yeah, thank you so much. So my name is Chris Reiniger. I'm the founder and CEO of Silver Lining. We're a funny organization because we are technically structured. We're a C-Corp. So we're technically a for-profit organization. Um, but we are, I would say, 100% mission-driven. So we definitely fill, fall into that category of advocacy group. But also I have a much broader mission, which is to shift the face of business and to remind people that we can be for-profit and for purpose and for mission, and actually advocate for our customers as we sell to them, that those two things shouldn't be mutually exclusive, that they actually can and should be just the way we do business now. That is what the world is calling on us to be. So we're proudly that. Um, and what we do is uh, my background's in psychology. So when I looked at sort of small business technical assistance um, is, the, is the language in the industry, um, with all due respect to everyone involved, a lot of it is very antiquated. We've got very sort of old solutions to new challenges that small businesses face. And a lot of the way that we help small businesses right now in the world is workshop-based, webinar-based, coaching, uh, boot camps. There's a very sort of specific way that governments and industries and financial institutions and, and uh, academic institutions are spending billions of dollars a year globally in their efforts to help small businesses. 
And what psychology would say is that all of that is lovely, but very incomplete and ultimately ineffective. And so we developed a SAS program based in behavior change science that helps small businesses set their goals but then actually give them the long-term sustained structure and support that is actually required, not based on what I say, but based on what science says, so that they actually get the support that they need so they can accomplish their goals. So I believe, based on my own mission and passion and also the data we have, that we really can flip the success rate of small business, that it's not true that 80% of small businesses have to fail. It's not that they are high risk, it's that the systems and the ways we're supporting them are ill-equipped to their needs. Um, so our core business is working with those small businesses. We have customers in 26 countries around the world, uh, that use our program called SLAP. And then in early 2020, we launched a lending fund. So we have a sister company that's now doing lending to small businesses based 100% on their SLAP data. So we're not looking at credit scores, cash flow, financial statements, all of the way that people have said it has to be done. We put that aside uh, and we're looking at five behavioral metrics and we're lending against that. So we're a SaaS company and we're a fintech company, uh, but we are completely committed to being small business first and running initiatives like Thank You Small Business and I Love NYC SMB with Spotify and other work that we do to really celebrate support, advocate for, and get support into the hands of small businesses that will actually help them. And you could uh, fill an hour just talking about all the different initiatives that you guys undertook yes. in the last 18 months since the <laughs> That's pandemic true. hit, I know. I want to focus in on one of them, and uh, I, I it, it preceded probably by a little bit your actual return to the United States because during COVID you were stuck in Australia. I was definitely so stuck, yes, and well and boy, truly did, stuck. <laughs> boy, howdy, did we miss you! Um, but you came back and and uh, created this campaign called "I Love New York." So why don't you talk a little bit about that, and then Rochelle will talk about how you learned about it and how you became involved in it. So, yeah. Chris. So we, so in January, and this is a, this is a testament to what is possible. So in January of 2020, uh, there was no plan in September of 2021. We are sorry, sorry, January, 2021. I apologize. September. I mean, we are, it's rocking and rolling. So in basically three months, we went from zero to hundred and our, we got into a room with a bunch of people and said, okay, we're getting close to the one year anniversary of sort of COVID hitting the world. What do we want to do to acknowledge just the dramatic impact that it's had on small businesses? And uh, there were people in that room from all over the world, and we kind of kept coming back to New York. You know, it's hard to be a small business everywhere in the world. It's really hard to be a small business owner in New York City, and it's really, really hard to be a small business owner in New York City during a global pandemic when you're a hotspot. Um, and because I've lived in New York for 13 years, I have a special love for New York City um, and a respect for the tenacity of the city and what that represents for sort of the hard moment that we've all been in together. So very quickly, we decided let's do something for New York small businesses. And then we sort of, it just grew from there. Uh, with a team of 100% volunteers and zero budget, uh, we launched a brand and a website, which you can go to I love NYC, sorry, I love SMB.NYC um, is the URL. Thanks to GoDaddy, they gave us that URL. Um, and basically, we did a public announcement on March 18th, which was the one year anniversary of the New York City lockdown, saying that we were looking for small businesses from all five boroughs, from all backgrounds, and all industries, the true representation of New York City and really started advocating for this idea that New York City is not Wall Street and it's not the stock exchange and it's not Times Square and it's not just fashion. It's a small business city. Small business is actually what gives New York its heart, its charm, its culture, its diversity. You don't walk in, you know, through the West Village to go to, with all due respect, Dwayne Reed and TD Bank, you walk through the West Village because it's got, it's the chocolate shop and the fashion and the this and the that. So we really wanted to celebrate the unique brand of resilience that is a New York small business owner in the midst of this global pandemic. Um, and thought that we'd hopefully get, you know, maybe a hundred applications or nominations to win this thing that we hadn't even fully figured out what they were going to win, but we wanted to recognize small businesses in New York. Uh, we had hundreds, hundreds of applications. Um, and then over the course of basically between March 18th and May 23rd, when we announced the winner, so just under two months, 
We put together over $10,000 in free prizes for each of the winners that we ultimately chose. So a million dollars of prizes that we were able to give away. Um, went through and interviewed every single one of those applicants, chose 100 winners with a real focus on trying to curate that group to represent people who stayed in New York. They didn't leave, were creative and innovative and sort of tackled the challenges they faced and didn't just stay in New York, but contributed, helped, helped New York through the worst of the times that you know New York went through. Uh, so we chose 100 of them. They're from all five boroughs, so diverse in every way that you can imagine, which represents what New York really is, in my opinion, um, announced those winners on May 23rd. Um, and actually still didn't have any funding or any, anything. All the prizes that we got were in-kind prizes that we passed straight back to the small businesses. Mm -hmm. And in sort of in parallel, and Rochelle can sort of do her, her intro to this, um, had been talking with someone at Spotify just really randomly because I said the same thing you did. Like, why would I talk to someone at Spotify about small business? Like, oh, what are we going to talk about? Um, and he said, you know, we just hired Rochelle. I think you should talk to her. We're really, we're increasing our commitment to small business. And so credit to Rochelle, uh, she can tell her version. We really had two or three meetings and she just said, listen, I believe in New York. I believe in small business. What do you need? We're in. Um, and very quickly uh, came to the table to help us get a little bit of funding into the project um, to help those hundred businesses also get Spotify advertising um, and to just be in it with us. So, um, but it was from zero to something uh, in a couple of months and then we announced it and then we really had to figure it out. And so between the announcement on March 18th and, and the launch on May 23rd, um, we just so many amazing people came together and and the small businesses that got those hundred spots are inspiring and incredible. Um, and it's just proof that you don't need hundreds of millions of dollars and you don't need big corporate, you know, structures that, you know, me and a couple of people can right. pull us off and then do something really meaningful um, for people and, and for a city that they care about. So that's the that's the beginning of the story. That's a great beginning to the story. So Rochelle, you pick up the story from your end. When did you first hear about this I Love New York campaign? What were your initial thoughts? Why did it seem so compelling to you, especially for what your remit is, what your mission is? Yes, absolutely. So I don't know, Carissa, we probably started talking in April or May. Yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> around that time frame. And um, you know, I that at that point, I was two or three months into my tenure at Spotify. Um, had got, it kind of got my feet under me and was starting to assess just you know had the path forward and building up our um, our SMB uh, user base and advertisers. And um, you know, New York certainly is an area that appeals to us. Uh, Spotify's world. Uh, headquarters are based um, in lower Manhattan. And so we are absolutely just as committed to the small businesses that support uh, New York City, um, as, as Carissa has talked about from Silver Lining. And so we were really honored to have the opportunity to come in and serve as a lead sponsor for this initiative and also figure out ways that we could um, not just supply funding to be able to support um, a lot of the things that the Silver Lightning team is working on, but also um, how can we provide ongoing education around how small businesses can really be effective marketers um, without spending a ton of money. Like one of the things that I love about our uh, product, our advertising product at Spotify is our minimum spend um, is $250, which I got to tell you, when I was running a small business, I did not think that I could access streaming audio advertising for $250 or we would have been doing it. And so um, just making it clear to the all of the um, Silver Lining Network that there are really great uh, opportunities for them to find their audience through effective marketing practices. Mm -hmm. And we're going to help educate them and partner with them over time to help them with that. That's awesome. And so um, as you were really, I guess what I want to try to unpack with each of you, um, as you built this partnership, um, and I appreciate the speed with which it happened. And usually speed means that you're kind of writing the plan after execution, right? I mean, you're just kind of racing ahead of yourself. But did you, did you, Rochelle, did you have 
specific challenges that you thought you wanted to address through this initiative on behalf of Spotify? And were there specific challenges that you thought that resonated with you that those small businesses were trying to face? You can take either either one first or first or second. Yeah, um, so I can do both. Um, the, from the Spotify side, I mean, one thing that we are challenged by right now is that um, we need to build our awareness with small and medium sized businesses. I mean, as you've mentioned, David, not many people know that that is a key audience for us um, and for our advertising product. So um, we are looking to um, create that awareness, not just within us. Uh, uh, Silver Linings New York network, but globally, we have a global product. And so that was really um, what we were looking to solve. In addition to just like having this um, desire to educate small businesses around just the other options that are out there for them that mm -hmm. might be a lot more effective than what they're doing now to grow their business. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess that really speaks to the, the challenge that we were trying to solve for small businesses. Um, I think having worked with small businesses for a long time, having run my own small business, um, you can really get locked into one way of doing things because there are so many different things you are responsible for. We want to kind of have the opportunity to, to prompt a new way of thinking, at least when it comes to marketing, because there are more effective methods out there for them to find their audience and build their businesses. Mm -hmm. So true. And Carissa, from your perspective, um, what were the challenges that you and the group of people sitting around the table as you're ideating this I Love New York campaign, what are the things that rose to the top of, you know, we really need to solve for this and we really need to solve for that? Yeah, it's so interesting. So Silver Lining, you know, we we have spent so much time, energy, money, you know, being a global company. For people who know Silver Lining, we have a fully remote team. Our team is in 23 countries. Our customers are in 26 countries. You know, we're, we're remote and global, you know, far before COVID made that true for everyone else on the planet. Um, but one of the things that became really clear in COVID is the importance of localization, of, of creating local community, and also being able to find local customers, you know, to Rochelle's point. And the second thing that made the Spotify partnership so compelling is small businesses really truly still don't understand how to do digital marketing. I mean, at all. Like if, if there's 100% possibility, we're at 2% in the small business population. And that's on a good day, I'd say. Um, so when we were sort of sitting back all the way back January, 2021, I would say the overriding emotion is small businesses are tired and just deserve some credit. I mean, that really was where it all started from. And that's why it's called, you know, I've got my little, got my little swag mug here. You know, that's a, my blur. It's called, you know, I love, I, I'm gonna have to unblur. I love small biz. Like I love NYC SMB. Like it, mm -hmm. it really did start with, let's just love them. Like let's, let's, let's thank them. Let's celebrate mm -hmm. them. Let's acknowledge mm -hmm. what they've been through. And the fact that if you stayed in New York in this specific instance and your business is still going and you found the time and energy to actually try to help other people in the last 12 months, like you're, you're a hero, right? You're, you're an unsung hero of, you know, of an economy. So it definitely was about how do we recognize these people who have been through so much? How do we just give them a moment of joy? How do we like recognize them and say thank you? And then it really was this, how do you create local community? Because it's lonely and it's even more lonely um, when you're going through everything that everyone's been going through. And then, and then the third piece was, well, then how do we practically help them? You know, our mission is that in the summer of 2022, we'll be able to release a report and a music video, which we can talk about in a second, uh, release a report and a music video, two obvious outcomes of a campaign like this, um, that will show a hundred small businesses in New York City had this impact on the economy, had this impact on job creation, this impact on this many local communities in all five boroughs. And that's a hundred. Look at the look at the perspective of all of the small businesses in New York and then amplify that out to all in the US and then amplify further out into all in the world how can we do anything other than thank these people, support them, celebrate them, and then figure out how to help them succeed? How can we, how can we spend any time even thinking about anything else? This is it. So mm -hmm. that's our mission is, is, and part of doing it in New York is just, you know, what happens in New York matters around the world. We pay attention to New York and New York has this sort of, this, this thing that gets people's attention. And so we want to make an example 
of these New York small businesses in the best way possible. We want to we want to make an example of their resiliency, their perseverance, their good hearts, their goodwill, um, and we want to make an example of their collective impact because it's incredible. It really is incredible. Um, it's you know superhuman to the point of what we were talking about before we hit before we hit record. And so our intention is to to tell that story very loudly at the end of this. So basically, our commitment is for one year support these small businesses with everything we've got, help them, celebrate them, do everything we can to get them what they need, and then for the next year tell the story of those hundred businesses to everyone who will listen, in the name of the bigger story of small business, which is. This is it. We got to get behind small businesses. So, um, and that's a thank you, both of you, because I think I give such a, a very clear sense of what your mission was going in. Um, but now, as you're here, it is in you know early October. Step back for a minute and reflect on what you believe you created in the form of a repeatable model, <laughs> in something that is worthy of whether you say it's a business school case study or whether you say it's worth a playbook sharing with my peers, it's worth something for me to return to this kind of a model. Rochelle, starting, starting with you, what do you, th what do you think you've learned and, and how does it take shape in something that you would, you would do again? Yeah. So I think, um, you know, something that we've referenced a few times is just developing a true partnership. So that's one thing I'm so grateful about with Carissa and her team is that um, that that partnership where we're looking back and forth and saying, okay, our mission is to support SMBs. Okay, what do each of us have to offer that we can bring to the table to do that and amplify um, that impact? And so um, from a, a Spotify standpoint, that, that comes down to like education around digital marketing. It comes down to ad credits for our platform so that um, SMBs have the opportunity to test out something that might be a new medium for them. Um, it's a, a, our way of finding places where we can celebrate um, these SMBs on our platform um, and figuring out how that plugs into Carissa and the silver lining um, overall mission. That's something that, you know, we've we've had a lot of back and forth about, and I'm so grateful for Carissa and her team um, for being open to figuring out the specific ways that we can plug in and support those. Um, and then Carissa, I know that you your team does far more and in, in a bigger capacity across many different platforms and surfaces. Yeah, well, and I, to echo what you're saying, Rochelle, I think one of the things that I've loved about, even in our agreement, so in our agreement, we've both said, okay, Rochelle commits to doing these five things and silver lining, Carissa commits to doing these five things, but we actually have a statement in our agreement, which is, and we're gonna try as many other things as we can that we haven't thought of yet. Like, you know, I think sometimes when people build, especially corporate sponsorship and lots of other conversations that I've been in over the years, to get budget approval and to get you know through compliance people are forced into a very narrow window of what the partnership will be and what the outcomes will be and it totally takes away from what spontaneous creation can be you know we basically signed a one year deal with the things we know and then so much open space to say well, if we already know this, imagine what we'll know in six months and then what we can create together. And so mm -hmm. I love that as a model. I would, I would love to see that expanded out where, you know, collaborations are structured where both parties get what they need as a minimum, but the, but the agreement and the relationship is structured to actually innovate and grow together because we're going to find out new things. We're going to have new ideas. I'm going to launch a new thing and call Rochelle and say, Hey, you want to do this too? Uh, and probably vice versa. And so to create that sort of minimum guarantee of what each party needs but the space for what could be and would be created i think opens up innovation which which we need and longer term collaboration um one of the things i've always been frustrated by in working with corporations is you know this is a sponsorship for this event well thank you but that event isn't going to change the world we need to be a partner for five years and we need to change the world together and fail a couple times and not have that end the contract but have that be a learning and then try these five things and like we need to do it together for a while so i would just say that that's something i hope uh you know we continue to build together silver lining and spotify but that i would love other people to think about as they're structuring these types of partnerships and collaborations um from a replica prompted two like really big questions on my mm. part and, and mm. I'm gonna okay. kind of go like this um so I want to make sure I come back to 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 both of them but my first question is um 
is take us inside the whiteboard of your mind of what would some of those initiatives look like over mm -hmm. the course of the next six months or a year. And, and you can, Rochelle, you can start, Carissa, you can start, you can go back and forth. But I, I think that, that it's helpful for our audience, I believe, to talk about the ideation in a different, in a different way. Yeah. It isn't just a sponsorship. In fact, it's anything but a sponsorship. It kind of throws out that rule book and it says, no, there's, there's other things that we can do. What are some of those things that you envision potentially being able to do? Not that you're writing a contract here today, but what are those things that you think you can do? So yeah. I'm happy to jump in and then Rochelle could build on it. Um, so for example, we sort of said Silver Lion should have a podcast on Spotify, obviously. And it should be exclusively on Spotify because we've got a relationship with Spotify. But I don't know what the, I, I don't know what the podcast is going to be about. I don't know how we're going to happen. I don't know how Spotify is going to help us promote it or not. But we're going to figure it out. Like, we'll figure it out. In the context of the next couple of months, we'll figure it out. So we know that there's an obvious overlap. I can provide solid small business podcast content on Spotify, which gets small businesses to go to Spotify to listen to it, which increases the ability for Spotify to advertise them about their advertising, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So obviously that makes sense. We don't have to figure it out. We'll figure it out. Um, another thing that we're working on is part of the I Love NYC SMB campaign is we have a concert series. Um, and so we're doing 10 concerts throughout all five boroughs where we're do we're hiring New York artists who have obviously been hit very hard financially, and we're hosting the concerts in New York City small businesses, 10 of the 100 winning businesses. Um, and so those independent artists, you know, don't me some of them have Spotify accounts, some don't. Some of them are streaming on Spotify, some aren't. You know, we're talking about one of the artists that's helping us produce this whole artist series is an incredible duo called Archive. Um, they're going to write a song because we didn't even have this idea before we signed our contract. They're going to write a song inspired by the hundred small businesses who won. I love NYC SMB. We're going to do a music video, like a gritty New York music video. We're going to release it next summer. Spotify is definitely going to be involved. I don't know how they don't know how, but of course we're going to do it together. Um, so, you know, there's, there's things where um, we have a big project around economic justice and serving small businesses from marginalized communities. Rochelle's team is doing a lot of work around what it looks like to be focused on different regions around the world who are mm -hmm. still developing. So Rochelle is still figuring out her strategy and her target. She knows that I'm over here and we know we'll intersect. It might be November, it might be February, it could look like this or this or this. But we've got space to not force ourselves to an early conclusion that limits, I think, possibility and innovation as we develop and grow sort of together and, and separately and merge and flow. So, but, I mean, those are examples that I think of. Rochelle, I don't know what you would maybe. Yeah, Rochelle, Rochelle's about to say, no, I'm not, we're not doing any of those things, Chris. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that would be really awkward. Um, Very awkward. <laughs> Your turn at the whiteboard. Um, no, what, what I would recommend, you know, Chris mentioned some really great examples. And I think the way that we get to those ideas is to have broader discussions. So yeah. it's broader discussions about like, here's what's important to me. Here are some of the things we have going on within our organization. Here's what I'm thinking about. And then that really prompts um, the, the other partner to think through how we can support each other and our goals. And so it's just having broader discussions, not like here's our contract, are you executing on your part of the contract, but more how, how can we continue the strategic part of this partnership? Yeah. And as the marketer who is selling the advertising, which always mm -hmm. sounds like a contradiction, but as the marketer <laughs> who's in charge of selling Spotify advertising, do you feel that this model is a better spend of your time and your dollars than a straight sponsorship of something? Uh, yes, absolutely. I, I just, we pretty much try to only have strategic partnerships. Um, you know, on the SMB side, we're really just building up our, our partnership base right now. And I'm really only looking at partners where we have a, a strategic um, uh, alignment. Um, we, we have some relationships with like telcos, um, but it is their long-term um, content relationships or, you know, we're, we're looking at other ways to partner than just like, hey, we're going to sponsor your small business um, 
a conference and we're going to throw, you know, a few thousand dollars at it. That's not, we're, we're looking for something over the long term. brands that we can align ourselves with, um, organizations that have um, existing networks and user bases that just work well for our business as well. So I, I just think it's such an admirable model and an admirable point. I mean, a point of view, I think that, that, um, as marketers, we tend to innovate and then withdraw immediately to the things that we're familiar with and just do them over and over and over again. And I think sponsorship, particularly of organizations that advocate or serve small businesses, generally not for profits, is has become too much of an easy button for too many of us. It's just basically like, all right, you know, let's write a let's write a check for for just recent a recent one a very large very large bank just announced yesterday that they have a grant program ten thousand dollars each for a hundred small businesses now that sounds like a lot but from where i'm sitting right now in a five mile radius is five mile radius there are 100 businesses mm -hmm. easily 100 businesses probably actually a lot more than that small businesses many of which who I'm, i would say are absolutely deserving of that $10,000. It's just a drop in the bucket. However, a movement, something that really is more of a can't feels more like what you guys have created in New York, something that everybody can take a piece of. It's not something that is exclusively, you know, for just those 100 businesses. It is a broader celebration of of the culture of small business in New York. Rochelle, do you ever think in terms of, you know, this seems to be working well for us in New York, why don't we do it in the top 10 cities in the US? Are those some of the thoughts that you're having about how to extend this, this program? Yeah, I mean, you have to talk Carissa into it. She's the one who's doing like all the work. Um, Maybe but... I can work 96 hours and we can sit at 90 to, to get to the day. Yeah. No, but I think this is, that is another way that this is replicatable. Yeah. Like um, Carissa had talked about some of the other um, areas that we're looking at globally, especially in emerging markets. But, you know, certainly we could take this New York model and apply it across DMAs um, in the U.S. And there are so, so many SMBs who are deserving, who um, need support, who need celebration. And so um, this is absolutely a model that, that's worth replicating. Totally. Again, one last note of praise, and it really comes from an interview that I did earlier today with one of the most powerful minds around um, innovation that, that's, that's uh, out there, Roger Mader. Um, has been doing innovation on a very grand scale for a very long time. And I said, if, if there's a missing ingredient right now to innovation in the world, what is it? And he said, compassion. Mm -hmm. And I thought, my God, what a fascinating word and, and concept to really isolate. And I think what's so demonstrable in what you guys have done is, is that the innovation of your partnership is really based on compassion, based on empathy. Um, for those small business. And, and I, I, I really do think it's tremendously innovative. So well, and, with shared, that, and shared humanity, I would say, right? Like I think yeah. one of the things that I just would add to what's already been said, if you're doing the work to advertise, then you've missed the point, right? If Rochelle wrote, if Rochelle did what she did to partner with me, simply to get the, you know, the advertising signups, which I'm mm -hmm. sure she wants to get, and I want her to have too, then we missed the entire point, right? right? And so just a note on that, I think, you know, I always ask corporations that I talk to, to think about how they spend their money, small business first, and not ask, will I hit my targets, but will this actually help the small businesses, right? Is this the best use of the funds I have? to actually make an impact on small business. Because what's true about small business owners is they're a loyal bunch. And mm -hmm. so if you help them, they're gonna buy from you. It's gonna be 10 times more effective than buying a bunch of New York Times ads or you know pumping out even grant money, quite frankly. So mm -hmm. I think we are there's so much capital moving right now. And I, and I think there's a responsibility on the check writer side to ask if the money that they're spending will have a lasting impact or if it's just gonna have a PR hit. And then there is a responsibility on the receiver side, in this case, me, to say, am I providing four types of return? So number one, am I actually helping small businesses with this money? Am I moving the needle and creating a actual change for a group of, a group of businesses, number one? Number two, right, are we using this money in such a way 
but it is going to create brand credibility for everyone involved, right? I don't think of me needing to create brand credibility for Spotify. I think about me creating brand, spot of, uh, brand credibility for Spotify and the small businesses that have won, right? Like everyone's better mm -hmm. together. So mm -hmm. everyone can win together. It's not one fancy partner gets it, but we can actually all build brands together. Number three, you know, do I deliver on my word? Have I delivered on the terms of the agreement? I have to do that. And then number four, right, does Rochelle get a return in terms of new advertisers? I have to pay attention to that. That's my responsibility as the receiver of this money. Mm -hmm. But if all of us were looking at those four things and those four metrics of success in every deal we all struck together, whether it's private, public, private, private, public, public, whatever it is, I actually think the effectiveness of all, we don't have a shortage of resources, right? Everyone thinks we've got, no, we have more than enough money floating around corporate, academic, and government spending right now. We are we are spending heavily in the small business space right now, but we are not spending effectively. And so if all of us held ourselves to a higher standard of how we spend and receive money and then and then distribute together, we have enough. We're not short on resource. We're short on, I think, strategic use of the resources that we have. Here, here. What a great concluding point um, that I hope gets across to everybody who listens to this. This was terrific, both of you. Thank you so much. Again, helpful in demonstrating not just it can be done, but how does it get done? And, and hopefully instructive to everyone who hears this. Thank you so much, Rochelle. It was great meeting you. Um, and happy to learn that Spotify is in the small business business. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks, Dave. And Carissa, as always, wonderful to see you. Thank you so much for all that you do, you Energizer Bunny. You just, <laughs> you are just amazing. You just, you. you're my hero. You always have been. I've got a lot of makeup right there under my eyes these days. <laughs> I'm aging quickly, but I'm having fun. So <laughs> that's great. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you.